Hey everybody, Jeff here again, and today we have another great video for you. Today we're going to talk about how to install laminate flooring or wood flooring in your closets made up of the all the leftover pieces from when you did the rest of your wood floor. So here you can see this floor that I'm standing on here. We just completed all the bedrooms here, and you have all of these odd, odds and ends shaped pieces here left over here. So here is our goal here as we start sifting through these remnant pieces and flawed pieces of laminate flooring here. We want to use as few new pieces as possible. We actually have this open case right here, which I think has about five or six laminate floor planks left in it. So my goal here in this closet is to use just this and all, any of these remnant pieces plus a bunch that are stuck in the other room as well so that we can return all of these back to the store unopened because if you open any of these they will not take them back that's what stinks about this and then we're going to show you how to do this closet and we're going to show you how to do this small closet and both of these closets have irregular shapes in them so if you look over here at this one you look down here you can see that this closet down here has irregular shape to it and you know all of these junk pieces that you thought were going to make it to the trash these are what you save for the closets for the backs of the dark closets that nobody ever really notices and so today along with this video we're going to show you first how to remove these carpet tack strips off of the cement floor and then how to remove the baseboards how to lay down the underlayment for your installation of your laminate flooring planks or your wood flooring planks whichever one you're doing we'll show you how to install them how to cut them all get them all perfect in here and then how to install the new baseboard on top and you can see how the tiny size and angled walls of this small closet here are going to make a little challenge for you all right so here in the closet here, to remove the tack strip here, this is the carpet tack strip with the nails in it. We're going to remove this nail strip from the concrete just simply by, we have a, a stiff scraper here, we just stick it underneath. Sometimes you can just pry it up with your hand without having to even um, use the, the hammer. Uh, my preferred tool is the demo bar, which actually I don't have here with me. I had to lend it to somebody real quick. but. I'll leave a description down in, down in our description there's a link to our other video that shows you quick tips and tricks on how to remove the carpet tack strip and how to get it all up in one piece without it doing this. But for those of you that don't have the other tool, this is great because this is how you're going to do it anyway. And we'll also show you here how to get rid of the baseboard. Okay, so now to remove the baseboard here, remember whenever you're removing baseboard they're always caulked along the top when they were installed. So you have to kind of reach around the top there and just cut through it, either with a utility knife, or here I'm using a 5-in-1 tool. And once you get it in there, you just pry it right off the wall, just like that. We have a, a video also for that, and I'll put that down below in the description for you. It's got a lot of uh, tips and tricks, too, also for rapidly pulling out baseboards. But if you fail to slice through that top caulk, and you just try to pull the, the baseboard off, you're going to peel off the paint and it will rip halfway up the wall or you'll peel off some of the paper from the drywall and you definitely don't want to do that. Okay, so we have removed all of the the carpet tack strips and all of the baseboards and we've cleaned out, vacuumed out this closet thoroughly and we have a blank slate. So now I'm looking at um, some pieces here just to see like if I started at the back, what would I end up? And we would have to cut a significant portion off of this front piece here. Uh, to make that one fit. So what I want to do in this case, normally we would start in the back corner of a room like that and go left to right and then work our way this way with the tongue facing that way and the tail facing this way and you just insert each new piece in there. 
Okay, so if you know me and you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I always like to start off with the first tile or the first plank on a floor to be a full piece when you enter a room or in this case here the closet. So we would really be more, much happier starting it off like this. And what works out nicely for us is see that the, the tongue there is an eighth of an inch. So I'd probably put it just like this so that the, the tongue faces, comes right up against the, the track here, okay? So that way when you're standing up and looking straight down, you can't even tell that there's that little gap in there. And what we will do here is we will instead start the, the pieces of wood over this way. And so if you were standing at the back of the closet facing outward, this would be starting in the left corner of the room and going right you know, from the opposite standpoint there. So this is how we're going to start these pieces. So the tongue will go up against the, the closet door track and the tail will go towards the back. And since we want to start with a full plank here, and it, it won't go all the way across, so we're going to have a full plank plus a regular cut that will plug into it. It will not be a butt cut. As for the other rows, we may or may not have butt cuts depending on the size of the pieces that we're dealing with. And there's nothing wrong with having butt cuts, like especially in a closet. Um, I will do two or three butt cuts in a room. I'm sure we have two or three of them going across this floor here somewhere. But the good, the good news is we don't really see them that much. And there's nothing wrong with them because they're being held on both sides. Anyway, the planks are locked down on both sides by adjacent planks. And then everything is held down by the baseboards. So let's go ahead and get started with our layout here. Okay, so here is our first full-length piece in place here, and, and this is a reject piece, believe it or not. I rejected it while doing the main floor. I didn't want it out on the main floor, and you really can't even tell why, because this is a very minor defect, but the defect is right over here in the corner, that little chip right there, that little nick. So it's, it's fine to put in a closet, and in fact, you know, back there, and when you're standing up and your eyes are about five feet away, you're not going to really notice that. So this is a perfectly acceptable piece to put here in the closet like this. Okay. So now all we do is just measure for the next piece to be cut. Here is another of the little remnant pieces here. This was from a previous cut and he's in good shape. Now this is the exact piece that we need because see how that has that overhang piece, that overhang right on the end there. So that overhang will rest on top of this piece. So these two will interlock nicely. So the way we measure this to cut it is you put the plank in the orientation that it's going to rest. Then you pick it up and you flip it end over end. You don't rotate it. You don't flip it sideways. You flip it end over end. So now that that overhang end is going to rest up near the wall here, we're going to take it about a quarter of an inch or so away. And then all we need to do is see that right there where it lines up with the, the board. And that's where we mark it right there. You see that? Get that in focus there for you. It's going to get marked right there. And we'll transfer that mark over to the other side of the board. We'll chop saw it straight across with the chop saw. It'll be done in two seconds. Okay, so here's our cut piece. And we can see it fits in there perfectly. And we have just enough gap on the ends of the wall there for expansion. So now let's see what other pieces we can rummage through our pile of cut pieces. And this is why we tell people, look, no matter what your piece looks like, when you're left with all these extra little odds and ends, don't throw any of them out until you're 100% done installing every single square inch of every single bedroom and closet, because you never know what piece will come in handy. There was one time where I was hoping to bring back a couple of boxes of wood, and I had to crack into one of those boxes to get one stupid plank simply because somebody had thrown out some of our pieces. And so that cost us to not be able to return one of those boxes. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, so we found this other piece that's about mm, half a plank or so. So if I can find another piece that will fit in here and, and take it from here to the wall, then I'll be fine. I'm trying to avoid doing three pieces across, if I can. If not, no big deal, but that's my preference. Okay, so to fill this gap here, we did find another piece that also has that overhang edge there. See that? 
Now, the only issue with this, of course, is this is another flawed piece, but that's what we do with closets. We put the flawed pieces in here. So this will be deep into the second row where people are likely to have stuff on the floor anyway. And when we're done, we can color this in with either a brown magic marker or we're going to be getting some stain to match this wood. Uh, this is the laminate flooring here, but we're going to get some stain because we're using that T-mold. You see that flexible T-molding out there? Because we're mating that, the laminate flooring out there in the living room floor to that tile floor. And we have to stain that molding to match the color of the wood planks there. So we're going to do the same thing in here with that. So we can just take a dab of that and stick that on there and nobody will ever know the difference. So let's go ahead and measure this one and cut it. Okay, so remember we take it, we flip it over end over end. We don't rotate it, we don't spin it. It's end over end. We line, line it up about a quarter of an inch away from the wall. Come back to where it meets the piece and mark it right there. And then we're going to transfer that mark to the front side of the board and then cut it on the chop saw. Okay, so dry fitting the piece, it looks pretty good. So our second row is complete. And now for what we need for the third row, you can see the wall starts to angle there. And just by the grace of God, we cut that angle right at the right spot, right in between rows. So I already have an angled piece here from the other room. And we'll probably go ahead and just start that third row like that with a piece that long. And then just make a cut for there. This one might have to be a butt cut if I can't find any more overhang pieces that I can use. So let's go take a look at the rummage pile. All right, so now we have that first angled piece cut and we just need to cut a, a longer piece to go here. And you can see I've already made a butt cut right there for it because we do have to make a butt joint right here. Uh, a couple of reasons because one, I also wanted to make sure we weren't anywhere near this seam here between these two pieces. So we want to make sure to stagger those joints. Now this other piece here is actually a, another flawed piece. See that right there, those chips on there? So we're going to slice those chips off, bring the piece back, mark it and measure it to make the full length piece that we need there, that cut right there, and then we'll cut it and put it in. Okay, so on this last row, we've got the angled piece in place and it's been cut down on the saw. We went ahead and ripped it. And then we had the piece next to it ripped also. We didn't even have to change the, the fence on the on the table saw. You just leave it alone and run all the other pieces in that need to be at that same length, the, the same width there. And so now to tap it into place, because you're not going to be able to get your fingers in there, we're going to use our tapping bracket here, which gives you, sets you back some distance from the edge of the plank. And then you just bang it into place with the hammer. And so now that that's completed, you can see our floor in this closet is done here now. It looks pretty nice. And we'll go ahead and fill these couple of little flaws in this one here. And there was the other one down there on that end. We'll hit those with a magic marker. With a, They have uh, marker sets that you can buy for wood. And they're, they're different colors that, you know, darker brown, lighter brown, black, that you can use for cases like this. This would be a perfect time, if you haven't already, to hit the subscribe button down below. And once you hit that subscribe button, you'll see that little gray bell. Click on that, and that will alert you to every time we put a new video so that you'll never miss a video. And also, if you like our video here, you can click on the thumbs up button down below. That lets us know that you like us. And any questions you have, please enter them in the comments down below, too. All right, so now we are going to turn our attention to this tiny little closet here. This is just a little linen closet. Looks like about 18 inches wide. And we're going to do the same thing there too. We'll, we'll have to rip up these carpet tack strips first. We'll peel off the baseboards because we're going to be putting an all new baseboard too, just like we are in the rest of the house. Now I'll put a link down in the description for my other video that shows in detail how to remove all these, but just in a quick nutshell, I, I, used to, I usually use my little uh, handy bar here, demo bar, and if you look at the tip of it, see it's got that little notch there, that's made to fit underneath where nails are so that it can lift up the nails from underneath. So typically what I do is I'll just ram it like that and pop it up. 
it kind of like this. <clears throat> Ram it from underneath, pop it up. So my goal is I try to pull up the whole carpet tack at once. Okay, so don't do it like this. See where I have it right now? It's in between two nails. That is not where you do it because all you're going to do is crack the whole thing and split it. Now you're going to have double the work. We always do it, lift it from where the nails are. All right, so I've got my second row piece here cut. So I had to make that 45 degree cut there, see? So this will just come here and lay right down. We'll tap them all in. And the third piece will be very similar. We'll just make it shorter and the 45 degree cut on it. All right, so here's our third piece. And he'll fit right down in here, like this. We'll just rotate him down there. Move him over a little bit, and there we go. So we have three rows done. Last piece will be fairly short, and then we'll have to rip it because it's not a full width piece there. We'll have to get some more of the underlayment down there. Okay, so here we have the last piece here. And that just kind of fits right in there. We'll center it a little bit. And then lay him down. And we'll tap him in with the, with the bracket. And so now we have two closets done. So both of these were done with spare pieces and you know, we still have some left to do another closet. And so all of these were spare pieces of laminate flooring planks. That was, some were defective laminate floor. Some of them were error pieces that we cut. Others were just simply leftovers from when you make a cut and you don't use the other piece. But that's why I tell people don't throw anything out because it's the smallest pieces that end up in the backs of the, the closets. So these two closets are done. All right, so you can see we've cleaned out the closet here. And what's going to make this a challenge is all of these angles because these boards are going to start here parallel to these other boards. But you can see once you get inside here you have 45 degree angles, 90 degree angles, more 45 degree angles, notch outs. So this is going to be a good exercise here for complex cuts of a laminate floor. Inside the closet here, we're starting to play with these first two boards. So we have to start over here and work our way down the row this way. And then start the second row over here and continue on like that. So what we have to do with this first piece here is we have to figure out where to notch it so that we can bring it all the way up to the track here. This is the track for the door, the closet door the bifold door. So once we have this piece of laminate floor cut, we can then turn our attention to this second piece and get it cut. Now this piece has to fill in this void from here to the wall, minus about a quarter of an inch or so. Okay, and so we don't have to allow for as much expansion in here because it's a much smaller closet. For an entire room, this manufacturer wants you to leave a, a 5 16 inch border of space for the wood to expand. So this particular plank here, remember when you make your cut, it's got to be from here towards the wall, but it has to be the overhang side of the board that you're cutting here. See, because see this part here? You're looking for that overhang right there. That overhang is what rests on top of the tail of the first board and clicks in place here, see? So Here's how we do the measurement. We have to actually flip the board over like this, end over end. You don't rotate it or anything. You, you just do end over end. You slide it up to about where the wall is and bring it back about a quarter of an inch. And then you look as to where it's gonna line up to this board right here. And that point right where my finger is, is where you mark it right there. Okay, so we're gonna come right over here and just mark it right there. So that's where this board will meet up with the first row, the other board on the first row here. So now we'll just go and cut this on the chop saw. So now we'll have our correct length of board. And when we flip this board back around, that overhang will be able to fit right here. 
Now, in order to figure out how to notch um, down that way to make this plank, this wood flooring plank come right in over here up against the edge of the track, uh, we can set this part of it here. So this tells us where to cut it, where we're going to start the cut as it leads all the way down the end that we're going to rip from this point all the way down to the end of the plank. So now we have to just tell it how wide we're going to do that. And let's take a look. Now the best way to figure that out is we come in here and we put the piece of flooring plank right here up against the, the track. And then I have a piece of tape ready here. And we will come down here and set it so that it's right about there. So maybe about a quarter of an inch away from the wall. So we'll, we'll make it nice and straight and tape all the way up here. So there it is all done and we're going to take this out to the table saw and just rip out this piece right here, this chunk. So now we're going to be left with about an L-shaped type plank and then it will fit around the corner here. So you can see if I put my plank back into position over here, approximate position, you can see it's made to carve around the corner there. Alright, so we have the first piece cut here. See, there's our notch out there. And we just slide it in right up around the corner there. And he's up against the track. And that's how it's going to look. Very nice. Now, the you see the complication here with the next piece? Because you can't just, even though he fits on there nicely and all that, you don't just line him up to the wall there and you don't just make the notch there because remember this right here has to fit down in here so we actually have two notches that we gotta deal with on this particular piece so you have to take care of this notch first with your measuring and then take care of the second notch so let me just show you and clarify for you let's say we had just cut out the notch here right and went straight down with it you would have this come all the way up to the wall here but then this space would be empty see so that's why we have to do this notch here first so this piece here is actually turning out to be probably one of the most complex cuts we've ever made here so this will go into here and then we have to cut this space out here to allow this to come up into here. So this blue tape represents the meat of the wood that will be left. So this will come and fill in that little corner there. And then you have to allow for this one inch or so jog out, which is right here. And we were gonna keep the line going straight to the end, except if you look at the wall here, the wall is very curved, it's curved way back. So by the time you get to the end there, you're almost three quarters of an inch away from the wall. So what we had to do is we had to jog that line back out here to let the wood come back this way and it will fit underneath the drywall so that's not a problem. We can go even underneath the wall so that's what we're going to do with this. This here will cause this, this laminate floor plank right here to go underneath the drywall so that will take care of the fact that the wall is crooked there. And this is what you have to deal with quite a bit when you're putting down wood flooring. Whenever you're installing wood flooring, you're always dealing with imperfect corners, curved walls, those are your enemy. That's why sometimes, you know, um, we're thankful when we can get underneath the wall, like this here. Well, out here on the table saw, as I strategize how I'm going to do this cut here, what I think I wanna do first is do a couple of different cuts. We're gonna rip straight up the board here right around where my finger is to catch this line right there and then we'll go this way and then remove this rectangular piece here okay then we'll be left with this little bit of rectangle that will slice all the way down here to this point and then over a little bit and then we'll remove this piece and we'll be left with just this little part right here and i can do that on the chop saw by cutting a series of fork shaped you know the tines of a fork we'll cut a bunch of slices into that right there and then knock them out and smooth them out with the blade
completed our cut. And again, I just want to remind you whenever you're using your table saw, make sure you have your shield in place there. Uh, we have it off because we know what we're doing. We kind of, every once in a while, we'll make a risky cut, but we're very, very careful about it. But if you don't have experience on a table saw, then you should always make sure you have your, your protection there in place. But anyway, here is the piece. It is cut there, and we will have to come in and notch over here later, but right now I want to do a dry fit to see if it fits in place in the closet. All right, so now we've tried uh, dry fitting it. And it looks like we're almost there, so we know this piece has to go this way, about another three quarters of an inch. So that'll move that in there. And so the only hindrance is, like I said, is this part that we have to cut out right here because it has to fit around this thing so that this piece of laminate flooring can go right under the drywall there just a little bit. And once that happens, that'll allow the rest of this part of it to move up closer to the wall and fill in that gap. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut this here out on the chop saw. So now that we have all of these slices made here, we're going to just rip these pieces off and we'll come back with the blade again and just kind of do a quick smooth out in there. There we go, nice perfect cutout. And so here you have what's probably the strangest cut you've ever seen on a piece of laminate wood flooring before. Okay, so back to the closet with our piece. We have our notch out there. Remember I told you we hit a notch around that thing. So that's the cut we made on the chop saw. That little cut out. And then now we're going to just slide this piece in like this, see? So now this part here is going to go here like this. So we're just dry fitting right now just to make sure everything fits. And that works, goes around there nicely, and now our piece of wood is sliding underneath the drywall there. So we no longer have that big gap that was due to the wall. If you, if you remember, we pointed out the wall curved in to the left there. So now that's no longer an issue. So this first row here is pretty much done here now. We did it with two pieces. Whenever you're doing a closet, usually the first row is the, the most time consuming. It took about a half hour just to do this one piece here. Be between planning it and marking it and getting the cuts made and everything. So in the end it will be worth it because now we're ready to just go. We own it for the next three rows here. Just simple putting down the planks. Okay, so now ready to complete the first two rows here. I have this piece which is about as close as you can get to that and so we're going to cut it and remember what you do you put the piece in the orientation where it's going to sit you flip it over end over end line it up to within about in this case five sixteenths of an inch from the wall and then wherever it meets up with the other piece of wood is where you mark it so in this case we're going to mark it right there and cut that right there so a minute later, we're back here with our cut piece, and let's see how it fits. Looks like the length is perfect there. So actually, it goes around this way. So it's going to fit right in there like that. And this is going to be a butt cut, but guess what? It's underneath the wire shelf. Nobody cares. So in the closets, that's where we do most of our butt cuts. Don't mind doing them at all. Every other row is fine. Okay, so now on the third row here, we know we're going to have a butt cut on this guy here. So what we have to do is just shave this tail piece off on the chop saw. And then we'll, we have another remnant piece that we're going to use here. So we'll measure him now and we'll cut both of these at the same time so that we'll have a butt cut right here. The first three rows are now done. 
and we have a butt cut right there and we have another one right there so now we're going to try to do this fourth row with no butt cuts okay and this piece here we almost had it made in the shade except the problem is, is right when we get to this curved wall we're going to have to chop off a little notch out of that corner there to make it conform to that 45 degree angle there and hey but you know what I'm gonna use my uh, digital angle finder here just to make sure because sometimes they don't give you a perfect 45 degree angle so the way we use this thing is you put him over here up against the wall, slide the arm around all the way up to the wall there, and look at your reading, what we get. See? So our reading says about 138, I think. So that's about a 140 degree angle there, which means the angle we have to cut is on this side. It's the complementary to that. So that's a, this is going to be a 40 degree angle over here. And if you ever, you know, have doubt about it on what to do, how to cut it, you can always grab a, just a simple piece of wood, make the angle cut, and just see if it, if it fits, if you did it right on your chop saw. Because that's really all we do is we set the chop saw for the right degrees and make the cut there. And a minute later, after making our cut out on the chop saw, there is our angled piece there. So now we're going to put in the full piece here then we're, this is going to be another spot where we use a full length piece okay so the fourth row is completed now we did it with two pieces that's an entire piece new piece there and that's a remnant cut and now we're on to the angled pieces that have to be cut on the slant and folks this is why i tell you not to throw out your old pieces from your other rooms. So I don't throw out any pieces of wood until all of the flooring, till the last piece of laminate flooring planks are in place. So this was left over from one of the other closets and uh, the master bedroom, which also has a slanted wall. So I can automatically, right off the bat, use this piece here to go right up against the wall there. And then we can just start going from there. And we have a few others like that too. All right, so we were trying to get more accurate cuts here and I had my doubts as to whether this was actually 45 degrees. I was thinking it's more like 40. And we measured it again coming down the, the wall as one side of the um, tool here and then coming straight across horizontally. And you can see we're measuring 40 degrees. So 39, 40 degrees. So what we probably ought to do is set the table on our chop saw to 50 degrees. That's the complementary to the 40 degrees. And I think that'll get us a little bit more accurate cut. So let's try that. Okay, so we've gotten about six rows in now. And we're progressing nicely down this angled wall. But guess what? Now, the left side here of these planks it has to get cut this way at 45 degrees now. So now we're going to be making cuts on both ends at 45 degrees. So we'll start off making a 45 degree cut on this piece and I think maybe one other long new plank might work here. Okay, so I've cut that piece at the angle but now for to, to do this big piece here we need to know well which cut do we make first? Do we make the 45 degree cut first or do we make the length of the board cut first? Well it's better to make the length of the board cut first so that all we got to do is come to that corner and make that cut. So the best way to do this <clears throat> is to put the board in place just like we do all the other ones and just where it's going to lie in the same orientation and then we're going to flip it end over end like this lay it down we're going to move it and it's it's this corner that we need to know the length of right because once you flip it back over that's where it's going to rest right there. We need to know that length from there all the way down to here where it meets this piece of wood. So we're going to lay this back down. We're going to set it about 5 16 from the wall. That'll be its starting point. And we're going to come all the way back down to this end here and measure it and mark it. So all I got to do is mark it right there where it meets 
where the top meets the top. So it's going to be there. Okay. And we'll make that cut and then we'll have the length of the board. And then we can go ahead and mark it for the 45 degree angle cut. All right, so I've cut the piece and you can see there it's lined up with the board, the previous board. And when you come all the way down to the end, we're 5 16 away from the wall. So this piece is now cut to length perfectly. And now we're just going to mark it up that way for the 45 degree cut. All right, so now here we are. We made our 45 degree cut there. And you can see about well, a little bit more gap than we normally like, but um, we should have had it come over slightly more. We gave it a little bit of a straight edge right there, but should have given it a little bit more. But that's okay, that gets covered by the baseboards. And it's way in the back of a dark closet anyway. So now we got probably, looks like maybe three or four more rows. And they'll get easier as they go down the line because now the pieces are getting smaller and easier to deal with and cut out on the chop saw. All right, now one thing I wanted to point out for you, don't just bring your wood out and start making your angled cut down here onto the uh, wood here without checking first to say, hey, am I set at the right orientation? Because remember, your plank has a tongue. This is the tongue, and then the tail part is over here. And which way is the cut supposed to be? This way or this way? You'd hate to put the plank on here and cut it the wrong way, and then you're completely in trouble there. So I know that my piece is going to be laying like this with the tongue facing me, and I know that my angle goes this way. So there's my laser line, and I've got it matched up there. So I know that I'm cutting this in the right orientation. It's easy to get fooled. These planks fool me all the time because the tongue and the tail are so close in size. The only way I can tell is to put my thumb in it sometimes and feel the, the extra height that the, the tail has on it, whereas the tongue is just flat. So just remember that. Think before you cut, all right? You don't want to be cutting multiple pieces three or four times. You want to get it right the first time. Okay, so we're getting close to the end here, and you can see on this ninth row, I've got this sort of trapezoidal-shaped piece that I made here. So this one required three cuts because it's one whole new piece because it's too big to, for any of the other remnant pieces that we have. So we figured let's do one piece here. And so we had to cut it lengthwise and then we had to make a 45 degree cut there and a 45 degree cut there so we just got a couple more pieces and by the way i just wanted to remind you if uh, you find this video useful please feel free to give us a thumbs up down below and then uh, you can subscribe to us by hitting that subscribe button down below then you can come back and binge watch all sorts of engineering videos that we do for you every week and when you hit the subscribe button, be sure to hit that bell icon right next to it so you'll be alerted every time we upload a new video. So let's add these last two pieces here. Okay, so as we get closer to the end here, sometimes the cuts can take longer because you got to make two cuts per piece now. But anyway, we're going to put uh, one more remnant here, and I think we might end up with a fraction of a, of a laminate flooring plank right back here in the corner. So let's go ahead and get the next row cut okay so there's the second to last row there another trapezoidal shape and the last piece will just be one triangle piece we will cut that off of this small piece of hardwood flooring stock right here we're going to just go like that and then like that with the cut it'll be two crisscrossing um, cuts out on the chop saw and because it's such a small sliver of a piece back there we're going to glue that one on and then of course the baseboards when they go in will hold everything down anyways but we're going to glue this last piece onto the tail of the previous piece all right i just put some adhesive on the piece there. Now let's go ahead and install that, our final piece. So it's going to go right back in here, like that. We've got a cloth, we'll wipe off the glue there, and then the rest of it will be held down with the baseboards. And 
that's what the baseboard is going to look like when we put it in the corner there. So this was a wild ride. This took about three and a half hours. You wouldn't think it would take this long, but it really does with all those multiple cuts you have to make on each board and get them right. And remember, we're resorting with a lot of remnant pieces and defect pieces and error cuts that we were using in the other part of the house and had to figure out how to appropriately slice those up. So this closet's coming along pretty nicely here. And it looks really good coming into this floor from the master bathroom area here. So this is the new vanity I installed here. And there's the mirror we put in as well. So we did everything new here. This is all new granite, new faucet with the LED. And you can see at night, the LED kind of lights up the sink a little bit on the bottom. It's kind of cool. I've been using this one a lot lately. And there's the rest of the wood floor in the master bedroom. All right, so now as we go to seal up our baseboards with a caulk along the top here, um, I'm using my little kit here today. <clears throat> I'll probably be using uh, this one here that gives you a nice small corner shape there so that you can shape your the caulk there along the top. Now, um, you'll see kits like these at Home Depot and Lowe's, but I, I don't like them. I don't suggest that you get those there. They're sort of knockoffs as to what these are. This is the original one. This is the original Kramer. And the other tools try to be this one, but they're not this one. See, this one has nice sharp edges on this. So that when you go to, you apply, we'll show you in a minute, but when you apply the caulk on there, you're just tooling it down like that across the wall there. And the sharp edges keep it from riding up on the wall. That's why I don't really like doing it with my finger. A couple of spaces I'll have to do it with, you know, with my finger. But whenever I can, I use the tool. It's just much more efficient, and it does it a neater job, and it gets you down the wall quicker, okay? And then you're not just dealing with a, with a mess all over your hands all the time. And then see these little brad holes here? These are from the brad nails. You fill those in with the caulk also. It'll just, just give a smear right over the top there. And then uh, you can, if you need to touch up paint over that, you can. But I'll put a link down in the description to this. So the one I get here, I usually get this off of Amazon. So this is the Kramer one. This is out of Germany. And, um, you know, like I said, all of those other kits that you see in the stores are just useless knockoffs. I've had bad luck with them. They just don't work very well. All right, so usually with my uh, tube of caulk here, I try to cut the hole as small as I can make it and still get the little poker rod to go in there and, and, and put, break the seal. And then what I do here, if you look on the wall here, I'm going to just show you this little section here. I'll come by and I just make a real thin bead. You don't gob a whole amount on that. That's all you need right there. You see that right out there? Let me get you real close. I didn't put a lot on there. Just a tiny little bead is all you need. And because the more you put on there, the more you're going to take off. And if you use your finger to tool it down, all you're going to be doing is snow plowing it right up the wall. And then it'll look ugly. It'll look very unprofessional. So what I do is I'll take my little tool here and just drag it right down. And you can see there, see how it just perfectly tooled it down there? So... Any little bump ups like here on the end, you just touch it with your finger. And give it a little, see, and look how perfect that looks. From three feet away, it looks like a perfectly straight line. That's why I spend the extra bucks and get the real kits like this. All right, now I'm gonna do this other little section right here. Just put a little bead as you go down there. All right, so what do you do with a little thing like this where you got a crack that's maybe a little bigger than you'd like to see? So here's what I do with these. All right, so I put some blue tape right there just to protect the floor. And we'll start at the bottom of it. Okay, we're gonna start right here and just do a little bit of a thicker one. I try to shoot it into that crack to let it fill up the crack as I go up, see? And then we'll get up to the top here and I don't I just kind of stop right up there, okay? 
so. Now I take this guy here, and I know that's an angled wall, right? So I'm going to use a little bit of a larger angled corner here to see if I can't tool that out. And you can see it kind of filled it in nicely, and yet it still looks like it's part of this wall, which it wasn't. It was an open gap there, right? So I'm just going to take my thumb here and smooth out that part of it right there. Right? And then as you back out, you can see, look at that. I'm only, the camera's 18 inches away right now. And it looks beautiful from this distance. And that's how you do it. And then in here, I, I usually just use my fingers in the corners. Just kind of smooth them out. Constantly going back to the rag after each dip into the caulk there. It might take you a few tries to get all that out. And there you go. So it's nice and clean and perfect there. And you can see why we put the tape down because you're always going to get some that kind of oozes down to the bottom there. So now when we peel our tape up, see the floor is nicely protected. And that's how you fill in those little corner cracks. But let me just point out too, uh, we have a a wider crack over here that we're going to fill in just because the, the corner was so uneven there on the wall. And we did the lazy man's baseboard method. We did not use the coping method. We did not cope the back of this piece. So sometimes you'll get a, a wider crack like that. And trying to fill that in and tooling it with your finger is often a fool's errand. Because your finger, look at my thumb, even all my fingers are curved. And if I try to just smooth that in there with my finger, it's going to be concave and it's going to go back inwards and it's not going to look right. Whereas you saw over here, when I used that tool, the tool is perfect because it has a nice straight edge on it. And so it fills in that gap perfectly and makes it level and flush with the front of the board. So that's why it's not a good idea to use your finger when you're tooling in the caulk on the baseboards. And believe it or not, folks, this is all of the remaining pieces out of 35 cases that we started out with. I think maybe four. I think we had 40 cases of wood flooring to start off with. All of this laminate flooring, this is what was left. Just all of these little unusable pieces, error cuts, defects. And so this little stack of wood floor right here, all of this laminate flooring is going back to the store. So that's it for this video. We hope you learned a lot from it, and we will see you on the next video. Have a great day, folks. Bye.